Are you utilising all of the sourcing method? Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So, in this one I'm going to be talking you through a list of 10 different ways you can source stock for both eBay and Amazon and feel free to post in the comments down below how many out of the 10 you are actually using currently because um, I don't use all 10 but I thought it would be a fun little video just to sort of list all the different ways you can actually source. There probably are a few little bits and bobs missing but I think I've covered quite a good range um, so yeah, without further ado, we shall begin. So, number one is sourcing within your local area. And what I mean by that is offline. So, not necessarily from Facebook Marketplace or Gumtree or anything like that. But actually just sourcing locally, whether that's from friends, family, um, just people you're friendly with, who you've met, um, wherever, in the post office, on the street, all that sort of stuff. Um, and you've got to know them and you build up a bit of a rapport and then maybe you mention the fact that you're a reseller and they say oh I've got some stuff you know would you like to take it off my hands all that sort of stuff so that one's a really underrated one and just getting to know the people in your local area um, and, and maybe even having the opportunity to get some stock off them that is a real real big one and it is sort of effortless it's just all it takes from you is just being friendly, uh, being friendly to people. So, yeah, really good one, that one. Um, and something I want to improve a little bit over the next few months. But it's sort of a if and when one, that one. It's not exactly going to happen all the time. Um, number two is a, a big, I love this one, it's great, but there's not enough of them. And that's jumble sales. This is a big one for everyone. I think loads of people love jumble sales. And the actual volume of stock you can get um, in such a short time and for so cheap, I mean, it, it's just crazy. They're, I, I would say they are probably in line with or maybe even better than car boots at some, at some time. So, you know, it, car boots and jumble sales, they're sort of like that. I would say sometimes car boots can be better, sometimes jumble sales can be better, um, but certainly the the prices you can get at jumble sales are even better than car boots so yeah uh, that one is a big one number three is something i want to explore more this year and that is auctions whether that's antique auctions general sales um electrical auctions um pallet or job lot auctions where you're buying big pallets of maybe new uh, new stuff to maybe send to amazon or whatever you want to do with it uh, that sort of stuff so yeah, definitely the auctions. I would probably see me going to a general sale first off. Um, not necessarily an antique sale, um, but a general sale that is maybe got a few antique vintage items in, but also got a few electricals and other random bits and bobs. So, yeah, auctions is a big one. Number four, I can't leave this one out, car boots. Probably the main way all resellers get stock in the UK. There's probably, well... Uh, that's a bit of a bold statement. Obviously, like if you're doing RA, you probably won't go to car boots. But a lot of resellers in the UK will use car boots to source. So maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, at least so many people I've talked to who are resellers do go to car boots at least a few times every year. Um, so yeah, I mean, car boots, mega one, get stock for cheap. You can get it, uh, get it at good prices. And you can come away with a lot of stuff as well, quite similar to jumble sales in that respect, really. Um, number five is Gumtree slash eBay sniping. So, sniping uh, lots on eBay or Gumtree, uh, whether that's picking them up in your local area, getting them posted out to you, all that sort of stuff. Type in your search on Gumtree or eBay, and away you go, and you can get a ton of stuff that way. And I think that if if you were constantly on Gumtree and eBay, having loads of different tabs open and loads of different searches, I honestly believe you could you could actually 
make a full-time income just from getting things posted out to you and, and just processing them when they come. The problem with that, because I've done partly that as well, the problem with that is timings, postage timings, they can all get sort of bunched up and you might get loads of things one week and then like nothing the next week. So you have to be really organised with Gumtree and eBay sniping. Number six and number seven. Number six is online arb, which is online arbitrage OA, um, which is basically buying from places like Lego Shop at Home, Toys R Us, Sainsbury's, Tesco, Argos, all on through their websites and either getting them delivered to you or going and picking them up. Um, and then number seven is in-store arbitrage or retail arbitrage, um, RA, which is where you're actually going into the stores, you know, Tesco, Sainsbury's, that sort of stuff, big supermarkets, TK Maxx, you've got um, Toys R Us, um, The Entertainer, all the sort of big toy places as well, they're great. Not necessarily just toy places because retail arbitrage, a lot of the retail arbitrage is sort of focused around toys, but... There are so many other avenues to it as well. I mean, you've got your home, your kitchen, you've got baby, you know, like you can go to like mother care and get retail arbitrage for that. There's loads of different branches to retail arbitrage, but a lot of people do just focus on the toy side of it. Um, so that's why I'm sort of talking about it a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so retail arbitrage, big one, going into stores, looking for those discounts, those deals and getting them at maybe 50, 60, 70% off, sending them up to Amazon, putting them on eBay, and flipping them for maybe a slightly less profit than you would do getting them from car boots, but it's still a viable business model in 2017 at least. So yeah, that's that one. Number eight, probably my, the thing I started with, and the one thing that I really love, and that is charity shops. Sourcing from charity shops, are, are, I love it. Yes, it's overpriced in some circumstances, but that's their, you know, that's their prerogative. If they want to charge a ridiculous price, they can do. And I always feel that in any charity shop, there's always one thing that's worth having. Sometimes I do come away empty-handed, but if you do look hard enough and if you have the time to spend, I always believe there's one thing in that charity shop that you can come away with. So. Yeah, charity shops, I love them. Not necessarily the best place to source, I admit. Um, and you you may pay up for things or you might not get the best profits on things and all that sort of stuff. And you might not find the real gems. They're usually more at car boots, jumble sales, that sort of area. Um, but yeah, I still love sourcing from charity shops. Nine is, I wrote down face place because I think that's what people are calling it but it's the Facebook Marketplace, so a fairly new thing. I've not really tried it myself, um, but yeah, some people have success with it. Other people say it's not really that great. If you go on Facebook on your phone, I think I've got my phone in here. I don't even know whether I'm going to be able to get it out because these pockets are really tight. Anyway, I'm not going to get it out. It's right at the bottom of my pocket, and they're so tight, these pockets. Anyway, um, but face place, Facebook Marketplace, you can go on your little app on your phone, your Facebook app, and it's on that little middle middle section in the bottom of the app, um, and it just lists all the things that people are posting for sale in your local area, and you can search for like different keywords and terms and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, that's one. I thought it was worth mentioning, but I don't really do it that often. And I know a lot of people haven't really had much success from it, but others have had some success as well. Uh, number 10, one-off events like school fates, church fates, that sort of stuff. Yes, they may not always have um, like you know things for sale or stalls set up for sale, specifically for sale. Um, but it's always worth you know having a look in the local paper going down to your church, maybe seeing if there's any banners up or, you know, advertisements up for any summer church fates or school fates because, yes, they sometimes do have stalls um, that people can set up, sort of like a car boot um, that, you know, people can sell there. So, uh, yeah, that is definitely one to look out for. But that, that one, and also it's worth mentioning, both jumble sales and obviously the school fates and stuff, they're very local and you really need to like dig to find them. 
Um, and I've missed some because obviously I've not been able to dig enough and find them in time. Um, but we've got a lo local paper. Um, we have like a little local board um, in our local village. I don't know whether it's actually updated or anything regularly. Um, but I need to start going and check checking that because that might have, um, you know, basically where new events are coming up and stuff. So yeah, that is the 10 um ways of sourcing really there's, there's other ways of course but they're the 10 that i think cover a wide range a wide variety so yeah t go down in the comments and let me see how many of these you are actually utilizing at the moment do you have any plans to utilize all 10 do you have any plans to use different ones out of the 10 um because i don't use all the 10 and, I mean, I think it would be very hard to use all of the 10, to be fair. You'd need a lot of time. I mean, all these things do take time and effort. So, yeah, it would be very hard to use all 10. But, yeah, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thank you for watching. Give it a big thumbs up if you liked the video. And, yeah, give it a comment down below. See you in the next one, guys. Hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Don't forget to go down below for exclusive content, all free over on my website and blog, updated every week just for you guys, so see you over there.